Hey there, cool kids, and welcome back. Sorry for the long delay in publishing videos here on the channel. I We have been involved in our very first house flip. For those of you who are into our home and garden section of the channel here, there will be a video coming on that soon. It has taken up all of our time and resources over the last several months. Uh, we just listed last Friday. We are getting offers. It's very exciting times. However, now that we're coming to the end of that project, I can start to post about some other fun things. And for those of you who are here for the tech portion of this channel, well, today, my friends, is for you. You may recall, previously, we talked about the Samsung Galaxy Tab Active 3, my personal favorite tablet I've ever owned. Um, but today, today, because this was so amazing, I am upgrading to the cutting edge we have... The Samsung Galaxy Tab Active 5. Uh, we're gonna do everything from an unboxing all the way to a power user experience, this time on Make and Believe. right into it um and i can already hear some of you asking some of you who may not be familiar with this tablet line why are you going from the active three to the active five what happened to the active four and i will tell you the active four was not an eight inch tablet it was the active four pro which was you know a higher end line uh, or item for this line of products and it was a 10 inch tablet uh, 10.5 i believe actually um but it's a bit of a different form factor, and I am just genuinely in love with the 8-inch tablets. Uh, I, If you watch the channel, you'll know I had an iPad Mini previously to this that the Active 3 replaced, and I have to say completely overwhelmed in, in every aspect. Uh, and now the Active 5 is going to unfortunately almost supplant the Active 3, but I needed to fit that same form factor of the 8-inch tablet. Um, Let's just pan up a little here, as you can see there on the copper chopper. In, oh, my goodness. Now, as you can see, on the copper chopper there in the background, I actually have a tablet mount. Let me grab the Active 3 here, and I'll show you how it fits. Right in there, you crank that down, and ta-da, you've got your dashboard. Um, any of you who are using cutting-edge um, Samsung ta tablets or Android tablets know the plethora of options you could have on a dashboard for an e-bike like this. I like to have my maps up, some directions going, I like some communications windows open, I am particularly a user of Google Voice to communicate with people via text. Uh, I also like Microsoft Teams. At any rate, ch choose what you want and get it on your dashboard and it's as easy as that. I will actually drop a link in the description below for those of you who are interested in the mount. It was originally for a phone, but I 3D printed it, I think, three, three and a half times the size to make it suitable for an 8-inch tablet, and it is perfect for my bike's dashboard. Back to the tablets, however. Right, so from the outside, these boxes look very similar. Um, however, when you put them right on top of each other, the Active 5 is just a tiny bit bigger, it's a tiny bit wider, and it's a tiny bit longer. It's about the same depth. Who knows if that's any difference at all beside, beyond packaging. Um, let's dive in and do some unboxing. All right. Oh my goodness, you actually have tear tabs here. I might not even need that knife. That's fancy. Right, two tabs, I believe that is it. Yeah, we're coming loose. All right, this looks like everything. Yeah, so this box probably has the case in it, if the three is any example. Next, we've got the tablet itself and the battery. It comes in this really nice padded kit case for travel. All right, in the box we also have a charging plug. Oh, and a USB cable. Let's see, it should be USB-C. Correct, USB-C. 
interesting that the charge cable and the cord are white, whereas the tablet is black, but you know what? I have a billion of these, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Let's set that aside. Let's see what else we've got here in our box. A terms and conditions. A little bit of instructions uh, on how to uh, to uh, put the nano SIM card. Oh, so it's a nano nano SIM. Interesting. SIM card in, uh, and to how to install the battery. All right, and that's pretty much it. The rest of this is just form structure packaging to keep the product safe and root, which anyone can appreciate. All right, so I'm going to close this box, this beautiful box. And set it aside with the tab three box for now. Set these instructions and the cord aside. Next up, what we're gonna do is install the battery and then insert the tablet into its protective case. All right, let's set the battery aside for a moment and undo this case. It looks like an envelope opening enclosure. Oh man, sliding that out, that is a beautiful device. I already put fingerprints on it. <laughs> All good. I know a lot of people are using uh, tempered glass protectors for this, but I'll tell you what, these products are so easy to clean that in my experience, I have not put one on the Active 3, and I don't know if I will on the 5. I mean, it, it, they are essentially waterproof. That is beautiful. Look at that gold. It's actually a green gold on the bevel of the camera. We've got a flash on the back. Wow, absolutely wow. We've still got our headphone port, probably audio engaged as well. The three was, so I imagine this is two. USB-C charging port. Our three physical buttons, which I just cannot let go of on my tablets. Uh, and then you've got further physical buttons on the top here. You've got your volume. This is gonna be your power button. And this is your active button, which is programmable to do essentially whatever you want it to do, uh, bring up whatever app, open your, your, your camera, whatever you choose, you can program that active button to do. And it matches with the green gold look on the bevel of the camera. That is a beautiful tablet. The back is actually a bit of a soft olive green. Very, very cool. And it does look like it peels off the same way with your thumb right there. It's got a thumb insert. Yep. Just pop it, slide your finger around, the whole back pops off. All right, the battery looks a little different than the three. On the Active 3, we only had actually three prongs here. So this battery is a different battery, it appears. Let's actually, I'm gonna grab that for you. Let's check that for sure. I'm gonna pop this out of its case, remove its back, and we'll do a one-to-one -one comparison. Okay, my memory was faulty. The Active 3 actually has four prongs on the battery terminal port. Uh, however, the Active 5 has six prongs. So this is a different battery. For You've got six terminal outlets versus the four for the Active 3, which, which means, unfortunately, that the extra battery that I've already purchased for the 3 will not probably be usable for the 5. You know what? In the end, that's fine. I'll probably buy another one for that device. And whoever ends up with this three in the future is going to get an extra battery, so sweet deal for them. Right, so installing the battery, it's easy as pie. Line your terminals up with your terminals, push the top in, and pop it down. Battery is actually form-shaped to fit in this space. There are little notches at the upper side. Uh, you can see positive and negative. This is it. This is, if you haven't seen my Active 3 video and you're new to this on the Active 5, let me just say, isn't it amazing that you can open the back of your tablet up and put, swap out batteries when this one dies or actually access the circuit board or the component parts if you need to repair it? Unlike Apple, Samsung is embracing the opposite. They are advertising this tablet for enterprise, for business use, uh, and most businesses aren't stupid. They want to be able to easily access the component parts inside their devices and repair them as needed. So as a consumer, as a, as a, a personal individual user, I'm also interested in being able to do that. And I love that Samsung has made this a possibility in the active tablet series. Um, so let's put this puppy back together again. Look at that beautiful green. All right, 
We're gonna start at the thumb. We're gonna push all the way around, get all those clamps back into place. And there you go, just like that, ready to roll. You could run this tablet just as is. You don't need the case. Um, however, I love the case. I love the S Pen that comes with the case. And uh, uh, as an Active 3 user, it's exactly what I've been doing. Um, before we put them back into the case, and I apologize, the 3 is a little dirty at the moment. Let's just do a quick comparison. They are exactly the same size. Now, we've lost some of the rugged edge from the 3 and the 5, but I think they are assuming that you were going to... You know what? No, it's still got a bit of a rugged edge. It's just an indent instead of a... Yeah, instead of a pop-out. I kind of like that. Interesting. All right, beyond that form factor, these tablets are exactly the same size and shape. Green button versus red button. Everything else is pretty much identical. All right, let's put the case on. All right. Unboxing the case. Another padded envelope. that out. Ooh, that's nice. And it actually has the green on the back. I like that. Okay, so on the on the Tab Active 3, it's all black. There's no actual accent marks. Um, I really like, I really dig the fact that they carried the green forward. I was worried that this was also going to be all black and that we were going to lose that beautiful green when we put the case on, but we're not. Uh, in fact, Samsung, if you're listening, I would encourage unrolling a product line just of the cases to change that back color. Um, <laughs> there are people out there like me who were super geeks. I love green and I would pick green, but had I been someone different or maybe if I was buying this for my wife, I might pick pink or I might pick blue. Uh, this would be a really easy way to allow people to customize this device and to tell them apart from each other. Um, we also have green on the active button here on the case, so that's cool to identify where your active button is. You've got the S Pen. Oh man, these are really in there when they come. You gotta yank them out the first couple of times. Now this is a different S Pen. I actually really like, you've got grip on the end here. It made it a lot easier to come out. Looks like it's got like an Allen wrench head socket on the top of it as well. Uh, you've got your button. Yep, the tip is collapsible. Very similar to the other pen. Let's pop out the Active 3 and hold them side by side button is in exactly the same place. This one has some grip up top, whereas the Active 5 pen doesn't seem to, but you know what? I've never noticed this in the 3. Uh, I almost wonder if the 3 pen will work on the 5. We'll test that out later in the video. Uh, but I do like that grip on the back end to pull it out and put it in. That's, that's something else. Yeah, and then I don't know what this Allen wrench socket head is about, but the, the Active 3 pen does not have it. All right, let's put this back together. Pop this pen back in its case. Oh, so tight on the first few gives. You really got to work it. Now, the Active 3, there was a certain way to put it in. I believe the Active 5 is going to follow suit here, and that is to go from the top first, so your physical buttons go in last. Work this top end in. There it is. Oh, you know what? This case is just, it's its more rubbery. This The Active 3 is a much more rigid case. This one has a lot of give. I like it. Oh, my goodness. I accidentally turned it on, so that's happening. Um, let's pop it in real quick. Fantastic. Now, as a Wi-Fi tablet, this is good to go. However, uh, this tablet I purchased was the, uh, the SIM card, nano SIM card, uh, and I would like to show you that before we go any further with setup. All right, I've popped the case back off of the Active 5. Now, uh, longtime viewers of this channel will know that I am a diehard fan of the Active series. In fact, I also have the Samsung uh, S7 Active Phone, uh, which they, they made an S8, but after that they discontinued the Active line for phones. And they, what they did on the S8 was they discontinued the three physical buttons at the bottom. <sighs> Look, the phone's great. My wife's got the S8, she loves it. But for me, the S7 was the pinnacle of this product line, um, and I can't go past it because I, I can't lose those physical buttons. And if you look at these two devices, they are 
I mean, they're, they're just the phone and tablet version of the same thing, which everybody who loves an ecosystem loves. I have the Wi-Fi version of the Active 3. It runs off the hotspot of my uh, Active 7 S7. However, I've upgraded to the SIM card version, the LTE version of the Active 5, and what I'm essentially planning to do is to combine these two devices into one here. Now, I can't do a direct transfer, unfortunately, because the S7 has a micro SIM card as opposed to a nano SIM card, which I believe the Active 5 has. Um, so I'm gonna need to get my, my data card switched over to the new version. And as I understand it, you can't roll back once you've rolled forward on SIM card sizes. So uh, you gotta be aware of that before you make that decision. It's an informed decision to make. That being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go all in on it, and I'm gonna show you what happened and and how it works. Uh, here is the uh, SD card and SIM card slot, and you can just get a fingernail in there and pop it out, and there you go. You've got your Nano SIM on the right, you've got your SD card on the left. Um, this this will take the exact same one terabyte SD card that I've got in the Active Three. I can transfer that directly over. However, I'll have to work on the SIM before I'm able to test those features. For now, I'm just gonna put that back in place. I just wanted to show anyone who was interested where that slot was and how to access it before we move along. And before we move along, uh, there are charging ports and interactivity ports here on the bottom of this tablet. It is the same with the Active 3. Uh, you can purchase aftermarket docks for these. Uh, I know some truck drivers have a dock mount in their, in their truck where you can just mount it and it will actually run off of the power through here in that mount without even having a battery installed. So super cool feature, awesome for, for enterprise use. Let's get the case back on, start it up again. Uh, I'm probably actually gonna need to charge it. Uh, I don't know what the charge voltage for shipping is. Sometimes devices come in at like 30% and I'd like to start at a full 100. So let's charge it up, give it a start, and we'll work forward from there. Plugged it in and yes, it came at 38% charge. So it definitely needs to charge up before we start. And a note on charging, this little device right here is how I charge. This is a USB-C to magnet charge adapter. So before you ever plug a USB cable into your tablet at all whatsoever, don't. Don't experience the wear and tear and the use uh, 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 and the breakability factor of continually plugging and unplugging a cord into your beautiful, wonderful device. Use one of these instead, plug it in once, and then use your magnet cord to charge it. I will drop a link for this product in the description below. Obviously, you're gonna need to use a USB-C cord if you want to do a wired data transfer from your device to a computer or, or whatever. Uh, this is just for charging, but I, I definitely recommend these to uh, prevent the wear and tear on your charge port because most devices, when they break, break at the charge point. Cool, so after an evening of charging, it is the next morning and the Tab 5 is now at 100%. I'm gonna power it up for the first time and I thought, why not power up the three at the same time and we'll see if there are any latency issues or which one actually gets going the fastest. Here we go. Right, so we've got the three on the left and the five on the right. And the five is the winner. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started here. All right, coming in tight on the five. Center button. Start English. Uh, I do agree to the Samsung terms and conditions. I agree to their pri privacy policy. Yeah, I do not agree actually to sending diagnostic data to Samsung. All right, now you can use another device to set this up. Um, I've never done that before, and I suppose I could use the three to copy settings. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? 
In the Active 3 unboxing video, I did set up manually, and I rather imagine this is going to be pretty much the same process. It is for most devices. So for this video, let's try to use the, the Tab 3 to set up the Tab 5. It looks like you could also use an iPhone or an iPad if you are an Apple user ready to make the switch. Um, let's give it a try with the Active 3 and see how that goes. All right. Keep your other phone or tablet nearby and unlocked. I've done that. I'm going to choose Galaxy device. Scan this QR code with your old phone or tablet. All right. To get started, it says on my tab three, you'll scan a QR code. Yep, set up. Connecting. Scan the QR code. Connecting. Verify it's me. It wants my password. <laughs> All right. Continue setup on your new device. Connecting to Wi-Fi. It's connecting to my Wi-Fi. It does say keep both devices on and close to each other until setup is complete. So I will do that. Getting your tablet ready. This may take a few minutes. You can already see up here in the top right corner that I, it's recognizing I don't have a SIM card installed just yet, but it did connect to Wi-Fi on its own. Pretty sweet. All right, I'm gonna let this spin and we will resume when it comes back. Okay, that took about two minutes, maybe less than two minutes so far, uh, long enough for me to go and top my coffee off, and I got a device notification alert. Um, did you just sign in? Yes, yes I did. All right, copy data from your Android device. You can choose to copy apps, photos, contacts, and more. Your apps will be installed after setup. You know what, why not? I, I'm, I'm going to be transferring, so let's take everything that's on the three and put it on the five. Okay, next. Requires these permissions. Sure, allow. All right. I'm gonna choose wireless. It is connecting. I got a continue um, on the other tablet. I have to give the other tablet permission as well. I'm going to allow that. Sorry, that was off camera. All right, so now we've got both message, the same message on both tablets. Connecting to transfer your data, searching for data to transfer. Keep the two devices close for a smooth data transfer. Wow, look at how fast that was. Uh, I'm going to say everything. Next. All right, I'll let this spin, and I'll let you know how long it took when it's done. All right, again, that was super fast. Um, I next got a Google Services screen. I'm just thumbing out my email address here where you had to accept some more permissions, which I'm doing. All right. Okay, now we're going to choose an entry method. I'm going to do a password, uh, and I'll be back in a moment once that's set. Okay, next it wants me to set up Google Assistant. Uh, you can do this if you'd like, but I'm actually going to rely on Bixby, which is the AI uh, specifically made for uh, Samsung once this gets going. So I'm going to not do this. Skip. You can always go back and set that up later if you'd like. All right, access your assistant without unlocking your device. Uh, this is still Google. I'm skipping this. Bixby also has that capability, and you can set that up separately. All right, Samsung. We're past Google, we're into Samsung. Customization is fine, smart suggestions are fine, I agree. You're all set up. That was really quick and easy. I'm going to click Finish and start the experience. Oh, there's my home screen <laughs> from my other tablet. That's pretty awesome. That's my wife. 
All right, let's see what we've got here. It is a slightly different visual interface. I do believe I am on the next system of Android. Uh, I'm gonna verify that real quick. I will note that the Active 3 still says it's transferring data. That may be the case, that may not be the case. Um, I think it probably is the case that it's transferring data in the background and it was doing that during setup and it's gonna continue until it's done. I've got about nine gigs total here. Oh yeah, I can see it's it's actually transferring. It's giving me the symbol there. Um, yeah, I have about nine gigs total, so I imagine it'll take a few minutes for that to complete. <clears throat> Meanwhile, let's check on the Android version. Interesting, so when I went into settings, it actually started to give me a tutorial. Um, I'm already familiar with these gestures from using the tab three, uh, but if you're not, <clears throat> It's interesting to know how to do split screen, how to do multiple windows. I will demo all that later on. So I'm gonna skip these demo steps for now in, in, in case, uh, unless there's anything that I haven't learned and we'll walk through that together then. Right, so hitting the settings button in the bottom brings you into settings, scrolling all the way to the bottom here and going to about tablet will give you the information on your device. Obviously I don't have my SIM card installed yet so it doesn't it's not recognizing a phone number. Um, product name, model name, serial number. If you go down a little more, we've got software information. I am running Android version 14. I do believe the Active 3 is on 13, but let's verify that. Yes, so I've confirmed, um, by the way, all done. So I can click done, and that's that's nice, yay. Um, I've confirmed in my tab Active 3 that it is Android version 13. Uh, which is really the, the core reason that I got this uh, Active 5 when I did. Um, right now, they have not pushed Android 14 to all devices yet. Uh, they started on the Pixel phone and, it, and it's being pushed, and I believe 14 is going to be the last update, if I even get it, on the Tab Active 3. Um, we start with 14 on the 5, and there should be four Android software version updates uh, from here moving forward. So this device should be good for quite some time, uh, keeping current with the current, the current software. That's important if you use this for enterprise, for business, um, security updates obviously are key. Um, so I wanted to stick with the times. And I'll tell you what, so far I'm extraordinarily pleased with the interface. All right, let's get back to the home screen by pressing the center physical button. And let's play around and see what we can see. All right, so just opening one of my random apps folders, you can see a lot of grayed out selections, which means the transfer is still in process. So I'm gonna give this time to complete the transfer. Um, it, it says it's done on the uh, tab three end, but it looks like we're still downloading apps and setting up the active five. Uh, so I'm gonna give that time and I'll let you know how long it takes before we are complete and ready to play. All right, so that took about 20 to 25 minutes-ish. Um, there was a lot of Google apps that needed to be updated. Um, the final thing it wants me to do is set up my active button. Let's go ahead and do that. So use active button with app. I'm gonna switch that on. Uh, it says Teams. I don't know that that's what I want. Hmm, interesting. I'd like it to be camera, I think. All right, let's check the app settings. I'll figure this out. I see what I was doing wrong. Uh, that was to use it directly with an app. If you just scroll down here in the active button, button settings, there are different ways you can interface with it. So if you just press it, right now I do have it set up for a camera. Um, you can choose other apps, of course. If you press and hold, I have it opening up Google Voice, which is my preferred texting app. Uh, I can set it to use while the screen is locked, which I like. So my active button is actually already set up with the same settings that I had from the tab three. So those settings transferred over too. That is quite nice. Uh, in advanced features, which is where you actually find the active button settings, you've got some other things you can do here as well. You can set up Bixby. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Bixby again is the AI that comes with Samsung products. Yep, yep, yep. You can also control SmartThings devices, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Samsung has a suite of devices that interface with Bixby with voice commands, turn on your lights and stuff. All right, 
Bixby can use. Yeah. Bixby, Bix, my Bixby can use those things for me. So hi Bixby will do the voice wake up. There it goes. Uh, you can ask it a question. Yeah, of course, because it wasn't really a question. Thank you, Bixby. Uh, let's see, language and voice style. Hi, my name is Bixby. 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 I like voice four. Let's go with that. At any rate, this is all user preference. Um, use while locked. I like to be able to do that. I don't need to wake up my device in order to interact with the AI. Yeah. Um, show Bixby app on app screen. I would like to see that. Yes. Uh, you can personalize. Change your privacy settings. Cool. All right, I think I'm done here for a moment. Hit my back button. Let's see, anything else I want to set up in here? Oh, there are, so multi-window. All right, swipe for split screen. That's pretty cool. Swipe for pop-up view. That is also pretty cool. That's an option you can do. Show multi-window menu with one window. Full screen in split screen view. I do like that. I like to watch videos and sometimes YouTube or whatever will just have it be a little bit with comments. You can hit full screen and it will expand to encompass the split screen portion. I'm not gonna use these swipe options. I actually use a swipe gesture for screenshots, um, but it's cool to know that they are there. All right, we've got some S Pen options. Air actions are on. S Pen to text is on. That's pretty cool. For the most part, I like S Pen to text because you are writing in the field and it turns it into um, to text that you can then edit with the online on-screen keyboard if necessary. Uh, this does not limit you, however, when you are using S Pen in the notes. You are still using it calligraphy style or pencil style or whatever tool you, you choose to use in your notes. It does not convert it to text in that notes app. Any, any more S Pen settings? Sounds. Yeah, I kind of like it when it makes a little sound when I'm writing on the screen. No problem there. Cool. All right. I think it's time to play. All right, so flipping through my apps, uh, I've found there is a phone app on this tablet because I'm imagining, because it is the SIM-enabled uh, Active 5, uh, whereas I did not have this app installed on my Active 3 that is a Wi-Fi only device. When I initially opened it, it did uh, do the thing where it wants to connect to your phone to make calls from your phone. That may be the case after I put a SIM in. It may not. I'm going to have to reinvestigate this after it's got its own SIM. Um, I believe this is a dialer, and you can dial directly uh, from the tablet. Yeah, it says... Make calls and send messages from this tablet using your phone's number and mobile plan. I don't know if you still need a phone tied to this to use this native device or not. Even if you do, I'm sure there are ways around it, like VoIP apps um, that you can use the mobile data from the tablet SIM directly to make phone calls, uh, such as Microsoft Teams, Google Voice, um, Talkatone. There are a lot of them out there. I'm going to say not now to that, and once I have a SIM in, I will reinvestigate that later. Okay, another quick difference in the user experience. In the Tab Active 3, and in other Android devices I've used, you can swipe up from the bottom to show all of your apps. That does not seem to be enabled here, and I don't see it anywhere in the settings. However, there is an app screen button that you can add to your home page to get to your full app suite as needed. Um, so yeah, that's just as effective. I will have that enabled for use. Um, another fun navigational tool is this, uh, the left button if you're looking at it in portrait mode or the bottom button if you're looking at it in landscape mode with the three lines. If you hit that, it will show you recently used apps. 
Uh, I'll use this phone for example. If you grab it, you can drop it to the side screen for, um, for a split screen view, or you can drop it in the middle to have a pop-out bubble window. Now, once you've got this in place, you can move it around to wherever you'd like it, and then you can actually launch multiple apps uh, in window mode, as many as you'd like, really. They can actually overlap each other, you can layer them, you can use this like a, a Windows-based uh, desktop operating system to a certain extent. Uh, and if you plug in a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, you've really got yourself a system. It is obviously an 8-inch uh, view screen, but when you're on the go and, and mobile a lot like I am, that comes in very handy. So when you're done with any of these windows, you just grab, whoops, you grab it right there at the top, drag it to remove, and throw it away. We can see what this looks like in split screen mode. When that pops up, it will give you the option to pick another app. Let's just do the Edge browser for your split screen. Uh, also, it will remember this if you go away and come back to it. Right here, you've got your split screens as opposed to just one app. So you can pick that and it'll re-engage. Okay, so one setting that did not carry over that I like a lot is, uh, is located in labs. If you go into your settings uh, and advanced settings in labs and scroll to the bottom, you've got an option for landscape view for portrait apps. Now this will force an app that launches in portrait view, view, when you flip it to the side, it stays in portrait view. This will force it to go into landscape view. Um, this is really helpful <laughs> if you don't like, you know, tiny little portrait apps appearing. Uh, yeah, it's just difficult to work with them that way. So key setting in labs, in advanced features, labs, right there. That's where you find that. While we're in advanced features, we set up our active button, but I did not set up the side button or the power button, essentially. Um, double press will quick, quick launch my camera now, and then if I press and hold, it will wake up Bixby just like I were voice activating it. Now that is, the green is your active button. This is, it's a dual purpose. It's your power button. When you hold it in combination with the volume down button, it will give you the option to reset or uh, turn off, power off your tablet. But if you just click it here, this is it's the side button. So uh, let's just use it actually, and we will quick launch our camera. There it is, boom, double tap, got my camera going. It'll also serve as a power button, single tap from any app will turn your tablet off or lock it, I suppose. Okay, so I've been playing with the Active 5 for a couple of days now, and one thing I've discovered about the user interface in the 5 versus the 3 that I kind of find really nice and, and, and easier is that this bottom display bar is up when you have apps open as well. So um, let's just open Google, for example. You can see I still have my quick select apps, which of course you can swap out at you know, have down there, whatever you want. Um, available. I use a couple of folders here so that I can have more apps than would normally fit. Uh, and then this is my apps button that we talked about earlier where you can find all of your apps that are not locked to your home screen. And then everything to the right of that are recently used apps. Uh, so you have quick access to those two even if they're not in your, um, your, your menu. So instead of hitting this back button, the three lines button, um, that gets you to most recent used apps and then long pushing on one of them in order to split screen or drag out into a pop-out window. While you're in an app here, you can, uh, I will use, let's use, no, what do I wanna use here? Let's use voice as an example. You can just long press it here and drop it out or drop it into a pop-up. Um, that's pretty useful, I think. And then again, just throw it away. So instead of one, two, three steps, it is one, two steps. Um, it's pretty cool. Also, I like that this tablet's UI pops things out generally as standard practice. I'm sure if you don't like that, you can change it in the settings, but I find it really useful. Uh, if you're trying to make a phone call, for example, it will immediately, once you engage, uh, pop out a window so that you can continue to use the tablet in the background for other apps while you've got that process running. Speaking of making phone calls, this is the SIM version of the Active 5, the LTE version, 5G. Um, and 
So it should theoretically be able to make phone calls just like a phone. In fact, when you go to the full app suite, you'll see I have a phone app, a native Samsung phone app. I did not have access to that on the Active Tab 3 Wi-Fi version. I have run into a couple of hiccups though so far. So the first thing I did, uh, just testing, was I popped my SIM card, it's a nano SIM, out of my phone, uh, and I popped it into the Active 5 and restarted. Uh, the 5 recognized that there was a SIM. The 5 was able to access mobile data on the SIM. Um, however, I was not able to make or, or receive phone calls directly uh, using the native phone app, um, just out the gate. There may be a way to do it. Uh, I, I have reached out to Samsung and they tried to guide me through it yesterday, uh, but we ran into a bit of a glitch. So I'm going to try again today on camera and we'll see if we can get there. Um, if not, there are other ways to make phone calls that do successfully work. Uh, Microsoft Teams, for example, ha allows you a phone dialer that works completely over Wi-Fi. Teams gives you a dedicated phone number. Um, it's not the same as using my phone's phone number, which I do want to maintain and I want to be a part of this tablet integrated, um, but it works. Google Voice also works. You can make Wi-Fi phone calls using Google Voice. Um, I'm sure there are other apps that you could use to accomplish the same ends, but I really want this native phone app to work. So what they advised is to connect the tablet to your phone using a feature that they call call and text from this tablet. If you turn on call and text on other devices in the settings and on this device in the settings, you should be able to make and send messages from this tablet using your phone's phone number and mobile plan. This is not ideal either. I don't, I'm, I'm on a quest here to actually give up my phone altogether and have my phone SIM live in this tablet and this becomes my phone, a big phablet type phone. Um, so that would be ideal. Um, however, Samsung, uh, when I was chatting with, with support yesterday, seemed to indicate that if I set this up and set it up on my phone and then try to put the SIM into the, into the phone as the main device, it might work. So I'm going to try that and we'll see together whether it works or not. One thing I will say is if you click not now and you go ahead and use this dialer, it will, the, the tablet, when you go into settings and look at it, uh, recognizes that, that the SIM has a phone number. Um, and, and it is my phone number that was a part of my SIM and my, my, my calling plan. But the dialer won't dial directly out using audio. It will, if you're calling another Android user, give you a Google Meet video dial option. And that will work because it uses Meet. Um, it uses the dialer still, uh, but then it connects to Meet for the actual phone call. And it lets you make and receive video calls uh, using the, the phone number. So. I tested this in both ways. I tested it where I dialed a, an Android user, my wife, uh, via Google Meet option on the on the native dialer app, and that worked. It rang her phone via Google Meet, she was able to answer. And then I had her call my number, my phone number, via Google Meet, and it rang my tablet via Google Meet, and I was able to answer the call that way. Um, however, when she called my phone number through her native phone app on her phone, it went straight to voicemail and I was unable to dial out. So I'm gonna try to set this, this feature up uh, here on the tablet and on my phone. And, and right now the SIM card is back in my phone so that we can get this setup done. Then I'm gonna pop the SIM card back out of my phone, try to put it back into the tablet and see if I'm able to call directly without the phone being on at all. That is the goal here. If not, I may need to make a visit to my, uh, my wireless carrier and consult them or reconnect with, with Samsung. So I'll keep you posted as to how that goes. But first, let's try this. So go to settings. Ah, okay, so when I tried this yesterday, there was an error and uh, I had to abandon it midway through when I was on the line with Samsung. And apparently, when you abandon it midway through, they, they put in a request to essentially delete your data. Um, there wasn't any data, but apparently it takes 24 hours for them to actually reset it so that you can try to set it up again. So I'm gonna wait until this message goes away uh, and then we will try to proceed. So if you saw the thumbnail for this video, that was the part you've been waiting for. I have reboxed my Samsung Galaxy Active Tab 5 5G LTE version in its original packaging, and it's going back to Samsung because it's a lie. It's a lie. They advertise this as a 5G LTE device. The tablet recognizes the phone number. Um, 
there's a software limitation imposed by Samsung. I've verified this. I've been on the phone with Samsung all morning. In fact, I was on a, let's give you the full history. I was on a chat with Samsung session probably lasted about three hours trying to initially troubleshoot and diagnose why the tablet would not make phone calls and why it kept trying to force me onto the call and text from other devices feature, um, which doesn't exist on my phone, so it's impossible for me to use. I further learned that if you have AT&T or Verizon, the call and text on other devices feature doesn't work on those carriers at all, so you, you can't even use the feature if you did have a compatible phone. Um, after that chat session, Samsung sent me to my carrier determined that this was a problem with my carrier, AT&T, uh, incidentally in this case, uh, and not with their product. They were convinced, Samsung, trying to troubleshoot this device with me, was convinced that it should make and receive phone calls without issue, initially. Then I went to the carrier, spent about an hour and a half troubleshooting at the AT&T store with a very, very cool guy. Uh, it's not them either. Initially we thought perhaps because I had an older SIM card in my phone, it was the SIM's fault. One moment while I silence my telephone. It's just my good friend Spam Risk. Makes you, want, makes you wonder really why I want to keep my phone number at all. The, the, it, well, anyway, I do. So, long story short, I was at the at t store. We diagnosed everything. They thought it might be a problem with my older SIM card. Um, and so he upgraded me for free, I might add, to a 5G SIM. Still wouldn't work sent me back to deal with Samsung. We also, while we were there, tested a variety of other dial dialer apps trying to get something to work, including WhatsApp, uh, which apparently does not have a direct dialer function. You have to call through contacts. I'm not a what WhatsApp user, so that was a new experience for me. Um, there is the option to port my number to Google Voice. Uh, however, uh, let's talk through that. So if I were to port my number from AT&T to Google Voice and have it now be a Google Voice phone number, I should be able to use it uh, for calls and texts over the data part of the SIM card, which function, functions just fine, and not the call portion part of the SIM card. Um, I could do that and make this function. However, I don't trust that at some point in the future, Google is not going to fold the Google Voice project, at which point I would probably lose my original phone number that I've had for over a decade and all of my contacts are able to get to me on. It's just not worth the hassle for me. I'd like to keep it within the, you know, the realm of traditional carrier services, as annoying as they can be sometimes. In this case, they are not the issue. The issue is a software limitation imposed by Samsung. Verified on this call with Samsung business uh, operators is there intentionally so that you have to keep buying phones. They will not let your tablet, even though it has a perfectly good SIM in it that has call, call functionality, use that function because you won't then continue to buy a, a phone, a separate device. I tried to explain to them um, that I, my intention is to actually move into a dif different ecosystem. Had I been able to make this product work, um, I would have bought another peripheral device. In fact, I'm very excited for the Samsung Galaxy Watch 7 that is soon to be released. So to have a smaller than a phone device, device equally as expensive as a phone, I might add, and then a larger than a phone device, device, as my ecosystem is a it seems to be a perfectly acceptable solution from the consumer end but the business side of things doesn't quite get that um you know this is almost akin to saying uh you you know we can't have cell phones be able to make phone calls because then no one would buy a landline we just don't live in that day and age anymore right nobody really wants a, i'm not nobody but very few people have a landline or won't use the landline for making phone calls we now use cell phones. The day is going to come when this extra device that doesn't have the computational power or the screen area or the real functionality that you can get into a, a tablet or a two-in-one will go the way of the dinosaur, the way of the landline. Uh, and that, that whether Samsung is the one that figures that out or Apple figures that out or whether some new competitor comes out and decides, no, we're going to make a, a tablet that makes phone calls. We're going to partner with the carriers and we're going to make this happen as a device people can buy that will undercut the phone market. You know, look, I can't see that far into the future, but someone's going to do this at some point in time and I will be very happy on that day. As for now, the Samsung Galaxy Active Tab 5 LTE 5G is, is it's a lie. It's not true. This is not a 5G LTE device because you cannot use it for phone calls or texts directly without connecting it to a phone. 
So I'm sending it back. Um, I may end up getting the Wi-Fi version. I, I may not. I may move on to another tablet. If you have any, uh, any suggestions or comments, I'd love to hear them below. Uh, and I will follow this up in another segment once I've uh, made that determination and, and move forward with a review of hopefully a better product. That's it for now. I will see you all on next time on Make and Believe.